All right, so let's suppose that we've been given a CMOS logic circuit. So and if, if we want to find the truth table for the circuit, there's really two ways that we can go about doing that. The first way, and the more kind of tedious way, is to look at this circuit here uh, and look at every possible input configuration, meaning for A, B, and C, we're going to have eight possible configurations. And, and figuring out which transistors are conducting and uh, kind of where our signal's flowing um, through the circuit. And so there's, there's uh, quite a few steps involved in that process. Um, but, but it will work, and, and if you uh, do things properly, you can get the right results. But like I said, it's tedious. But we also know that we're dealing with a digital logic circuit. And so the other approach is to assume that there are logic gates in this circuit that we can kind of uh, find, and then we can make a uh, an equivalent digital logic diagram for this circuit, and then it will make the uh, truth table process a lot simpler. So, uh, so we're going to take the latter approach, and what I've done is I have... Um, the two really common CMOS gates, we have a NAND gate and a NOR gate. And uh, just, just a quick discussion about the NAND and the NOR gate. If we look at the NAND first, we see that we have two NMOS transistors in series. We have two PMOS transistors in parallel. Um, and, so, and the PMOS transistors are hooked to a five volt reference or our high voltage. And our series, uh, this A and B transistor, the NMOS, uh, they are hooked to ground or zero volts. And so this is making a NAND gate. And so something to kind of consider is since these two transistors here are in, are in series, what they're kind of doing is they both have to be on in order for ground to, uh, I don't want to say flow, but for ground to be referenced at this point, or in order for that signal to, I guess you could say, the signal flow there. Um, but a good question to kind of ask yourself is what would happen if B was hooked to this transistor and A was hooked to this transistor? Well, we should find that it doesn't actually make a difference if they're uh, flipped around there because they're still kind of serving the same purpose where they both have to be on or closed in order for this uh, signal reference to go to ground. Same thing with these two parallel transistors. If we went and swapped them around, if we had A here and B here, it wouldn't actually make a difference. So that's just kind of something to consider uh, when, when you're looking at um, your circuit is that maybe things are a little flipped around, but really, uh, really it's the same thing as this uh, circuit here. And we look at the NOR gate, and it's actually kind of similar to the NAND, except for it's flipped on its side here. We've got... Our, our NMOS transistors are now in parallel, and our PMOS transistors are now in series. And then we have our signal out. Um, it's kind of tapped at the middle here. So what you want to do is you want to look at these circuits and see if we recognize them anywhere in our, uh, in our given circuit. So the first thing maybe I'll do is I'll look at the NAND here. So if I look at the NAND, uh, maybe the first feature I want to look for is two NMOS, or they don't have the bubble on them, so two NMOS transistors that are in series. So if I kind of start looking around here, so these are PMOS in series. Right here I've got two NMOSs that are in series. And then I say, all right, maybe this is a NAND gate. Do I have the other two transistor transistors uh, configured properly? Uh, so I need two PMOSs that are in parallel and then they're hooked to this node here. And I can see, yes, I do have two PMOSs that are in parallel. Um, but I guess kind of the weird thing that I've got going on here is there's a connection between this transistor and this transistor. And, and that's, that's not following this pattern here. But we have to kind of step back and say, is, is that really right for me to say that? Is, it, is this really not the same thing as that because of that connection? And the answer to that is no. This is this here is definitely a NAND gate, and what we're seeing seeing with this connection here is that 
this uh, this transistor and this transistor are tied to the same signal. That's all it means. So really, what we have here, A and A, that means that they are actually tied together to the same signal. In order for that to work, they're at some point going to have to be t tied to the same exact wire. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this set of transistors here is in fact a NAND gate, where we have C as one input, and then we have another input that actually is coming from some of the circuitry upstream. So let's kind of start keeping track of this here. So we've got a NAND gate. And we know that one of the inputs is a C. And we know that we're dealing with the output here. So we'll just write that. There's our output. So we've got some more transistors uh, to uh, figure out which gate they actually uh, uh, create. So let's see, do we have any more NAND gates? We're looking for two series NMOS. Uh, well, we've got two series PMOS. Uh, these guys aren't, well, they're, they're kind of in series, but uh, this this also is in a NAND gate because we've got an, uh, an NMOS, or a PMOS and an NMOS. So I, I don't think there's any more NAND gates in this circuit. How about a uh, NOR gate? But we have two series uh, PMOS transistors. Well, right at the top here, we've got two series PMOSs. Um, and then we look for the rest of the uh, gate. And sure enough, we see that we have two parallel NMOS transistors. So I'm pretty confident here that this is a, uh, that this is a NOR gate. So since this is a, uh, NOR gate, we can kind of look at the inputs. We see that we've got just an A and a B. And this NOR gate is going to these transistors here. So let's just kind of have a uh, NOR gate kind of. Sorry, I'm drawn with a mouse, so I'm not the best. Uh, don't have the best gates there. So this is our kind of gumpy looking NOR gate. And, and it's kind of floating off here because we've still got these two transistors to deal with here. Uh, but we do know that our inputs are A and we have B. So let's see here. We've got these two transistors left and we don't have, I, I, I don't have any other two transistor uh, circuits listed here. Um, but Let's kind of look and see what's going on here. So we've got one signal that's routing to these two transistors, right? So the this signal is the same as this signal here. And then it kind of looks like we've got one output coming out of this little two transistor system. We have to ask which kind of gates only have one input and one output. And the answer to that is we could either have a not gate or a buffer gate. So let's think about this. Uh, so the truth table for a, uh, a not gate is a zero. If we put a zero in, then we get a one on the output. If we put a one in, then we get a zero on the output. So, uh, so something that we could do is we could just look up the the gate for or the uh, CMOS uh, circuit for a NOT gate. We could look that up and see if that matches, um, or maybe if if not, then we could look at the CMOS uh, gate for a or the CMOS circuit for a uh, for a buffer and see if it matches. But just just for laughs, let's uh let's kind of do the basic signal analysis here. So. Let's say we have a zero here. So if we have a zero here, let's think about what transistors are going to be conducting or which which ones, you know, we can kind of think of it being closed. So if we have a zero here, this NMOS transistor is gonna be completely open, meaning that it's not going to be making the signal ground. This PMOS transistor on the other hand, it is going to be completely closed. So we can kind of assume that we have a short across here. 
And so that means when there's a zero here, we have a five volt reference here. And so that is looking a lot like an inverter. We have zero here, we have five volts here, or a zero and a one. Now, just real quick, just to uh, follow through, what happens if we have a one here? If we have a one here, or five volts, this transistor is open. So we can kind of draw an open line there, meaning that there's no conduction here, or we're not referencing to five volts. And this transistor here is completely closed with, with a one there. And so that means that when we have a one, we're actually referencing ground to this point and we get a zero on the output. So we can see here that this is a not gate. So uh, we, we can now complete our circuit by drawing, once again, a little goofy looking circuit there. It should, should do the trick. We're connecting this guy in and let's move it down. So there is our complete uh, diagram. We could actually simplify that because we have an inversion bubble there and then another inverter. So our our uh, our circuit is well. Let's let's write the equation. We have uh, a or b, and technically technically this is a NOR gate. What we'd have is we'd have a prime, and then we'd prime it again. And so instead, just to keep things simple, we're just going to keep it as A or B, because the prime kind of cancels out if you have another prime on it. And then we have that, um, we're anding that with C. So we'll just put a dot there for AND and C. Sorry, not ANDing it, we're NANDing it. Then we're going to have this around there. And since we're NANDing, we've got to have our prime. So this is our, uh, this is our equation, and this is our circuit, our, our logic circuit for this CMOS circuit. And then finding the truth table for either this circuit or this equation um, shouldn't be too difficult. Um, this, this is just regular, this is a regular digital logic circuit, and so we can go about kind of the old process of solving that problem. So hopefully uh, this helps you understand how to go about tackling these CMOS circuits.